Now for two days says she was released because that country is trying to put its best foot forward as the 2008 Olympics approach. Ladin Teton is the executive director of Students for Free Tibet, and she is joining me now. Good evening to you, Ladin. Good evening. Hi. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, you are. Oh, good. Uh, tell us about what has happened to you the last couple of days. You went to China to make your message clear. Mm -hmm. How did authorities there find you? Because we should make it clear to our viewers that you weren't one of those involved in actually unfurling that banner. You were on your computer. Yes, I was um, traveling around Beijing with a colleague from London and I was blogging. I had a travel blog, uh, BeijingWideOpen.org and uh, we were just moving around and openly, I was openly expressing my opinions and looking at, you know, China one year before the games and how they're using Tibet as a central part of their public relations strategy in order to sort of put this best image forward um, for the Olympic Games and legitimize their rule in Tibet. I think they found us probably because they saw the blog or someone saw the blog um, and then it was just a matter of probably two days before they found us at our hotel on the second morning when we were waking up um, and from there they just followed us. And so eventually you were arrested what happened to you during that time that you were detained? Um, basically, they just wanted to know all the details of what we'd been doing um, and where we had been. And they printed off pages of the blog and brought those to me and were really fixated on uh, why we thought Tibet should be free. Why did we think Tibet didn't have human rights? Really focused on why Paul, my colleague, would care. It, they thought, well, you're Tibetan, you're ethnically Tibetan, so that's why you care, but why does he care? Um, is it just sympathy they wanted to know? So they were just sort of fixated on the details and then also really um, seemed to want to sort of get at the issue and, and maybe argue back and forth with, with me. Uh, but I just, I didn't engage them on that level. I didn't think that that was why we were there. It wasn't about them. It's about the Chinese leadership and the, go the government and the system of control. So how would you overall characterize that exchange? Were they hostile? Did you feel frightened? I think just being in custody in China, especially as a Tibetan, I've grown up with the stories of, uh, you know, our people, family, friends who've, you know, been imprisoned and tortured and plainclothes police in China mean something to me that kind of goes really deep and is really frightening. So that was unsettling for sure. But overall, I would say just in the exchanges with them, they were clearly frustrated and, and angry and they wanted to get digs in at me. But uh, they tried to remain sort of keep a distance also. They didn't touch us. They didn't physically threaten us. Um, it was clear that they, you know, were feeling uh, pressured or feeling watched. They actually asked me a lot about what media I talked to and mm. did I talk to media outside of China. So they knew all that was going on. And so now that you're back at home, I'm mm -hmm. sure that you have figured out that people are split on this. Some people mm -hmm. support you. Some people are very critical of what you've done. Would you do it again? Sure, absolutely, I would do it again. I, I understand some people don't un understand what role uh, nonviolent direct action plays in movements for social change and political change. Um, if you look at any movement for social change in history, especially nonviolent ones, you will see lots of critics, uh, whether it was people fighting to end uh, apartheid in South Africa, whether it was you know blacks in the US fighting for civil rights, all through history, there's always plenty of critics and plenty of people who say, why, don't rock the boat, don't cause trouble. Um, but I have to say, you know, I know in my heart what we did was right. I know Tibetans, six million of them are suffering terribly for over 50 years under China's control. And no government and no corporation, and certainly not the International Olympic Committee, has shown themselves willing to stand up and really even push the Chinese on the issue anymore uh, because of trade and because of economics. So that leaves people like me and citizens of conscience. And I think our actions are not that extreme compared to what the Chinese are doing in Tibet. Well, we're just about out of time, Ladan, but would you go back or have you been told not to come back to China? Um, I don't think I'm welcome to come back on the one level. On the other level, uh, they were certainly saying, come back and we'll give you a tour and we'll show you the real China. I don't know that I'll take them up on that, but it's, um, I certainly would go back if there was a need and if I could do something useful both for Tibetans and I think really importantly for people of China to also one day have freedom and democracy and true openness, not like what China's saying they have right now with the Olympic Games. Ladin Teitong, thanks for your thoughts. Thank you.